Through history, the territory inside the borders of Pakistan witnessed large civilizations, wars, development, religions, and reforms. In this video, we will advance rapidly through some important events that existed here. Modern humans are thought to have arrived on Pakistan between 73,000 and 55,000 years ago. Settled life, which farming and pastoralism, started around 7,000 BC. People worked in agriculture and in domestication of animals like goats, sheep, or cattle. By 4,500 BC, settled life had become more widespread and in time evolved into the Indus Valley Civilization, one of the earliest civilizations. Indus Valley Civilization, as well as ancient Egypt or Mesopotamia, was noted for developing new techniques in handicraft, metallurgy, development. It's believed to be the first civilization to use wheeled transport in the form of bullock carts, and also use boats. The route which traversed the Indus Valley, linking the Central Asia, the Indian subcontinent, and the Orient, have attracted people from far places. In the beginning of the second millennium BC, climate change with persistent drought led to the abandonment of the urban centers of the Indus Valley civilization. Its population resettled in smaller villages and mixed with Indo-Aryan tribes, who moved into other areas of Indian subcontinent in several waves of migration, also driven by the effects of this climate change. The Vedic period, 1500 to 500 BC. As Indo-Aryans migrated and settled into the Indus Valley, along with them came their distinctive religious traditions and practices which fused with local culture. The initial early Vedic culture was a tribal, pastoral society centered in the Indus Valley of what is today Pakistan. During this period, the Vedas, the oldest scriptures of Hinduism, were composed. The Vedic tribes remained in the Indus Valley by 6th century BC. These tribes fought against one another and were vulnerable against possible outsiders or invasions. King Darius I of the Achaemenid Empire took advantage of the opportunity and planned for an invasion. The Indus Valley was a major objective for the Persian Empire and other earlier incursions and campaigns existed in the Indus River. In 518 BC, Darius led his army through the Khyber Pass, eventually reaching the Arabian Sea coast in Sindh by 516 BC. Under Persian rule, a system of centralized administration with a bureaucratic system was introduced into the Indus Valley for the first time. Provinces or satrapy were established with provincial capitals. Also, there is no archaeological evidence of Achaemenid control over these regions, as not a single archaeological site that can be positively identified with the Achaemenid Empire has been found anywhere in Pakistan. We know about the easternmost satraps, and the borderlands of the Achaemenid Empire is set in Darius inscriptions and from Greek sources. In 328 BC, Alexander the Great, at that time king of Macedonia, king of Persia, and pharaoh of Egypt, had conquered much of the former satraps in the Achaemenid Empire up to Bactria. When Alexander died in 323 BCE, he left behind an expansive empire stretching from Greece to the Indus River. The empire was put under the authority of Perdiccas, and the territories were divided among Alexander's generals. Due to the internal conflicts of Alexander's generals, Chandragupta and his Brahmin counselor Chanakya saw an opportunity to expand the Mauryan Empire from its Ganges plain heartland in Bihar towards the Indus Valley between 325 BCE to 303 BCE. Mauryan Empire incorporated today's Pakistan and far beyond in today's Afghanistan. It collapsed around 180 BC and the Shunga Empire started to exist, but not near the Indus Valley. Here in Alexander's campaigns, many Greeks established in this part of the empire, creating communities and influencing the region with their culture. The Indo-Greek kingdom expanded beyond the Hindu Kush. Their territories covered Panjshir and Kapissa in modern Afghanistan and extended to the Punjab region, with many tributaries to the south and east. The Greek and Indian languages, culture, traditions mixed, creating a very interesting period for this land. Sakas migrated from southern Central Asia into Pakistan from the middle of the 2nd century BC to the 1st century BC. They replaced the Indo-Greeks. Indo-Parthian and Kushan empires ruled the lands here in the 1st centuries AD. By the end of the 3rd century, the Sassanid Shah Anshah, Shapur I, had incorporated the Indo-Iranian borderlands into the Sassanid realm. The Gupta Empire was an ancient Indian empire existing approximately from 320 to 600 and covered much of northern South Asia, including some parts of modern Pakistan, having its border with the Sassanid Empire in the Indus Valley across Indus River. 
This period is very important. Great accomplishments and great cultural developments took place during the reigns of important leaders. As an example, we can give the literary epics such as Mahabharata and Ramayana. This structure collapsed due to internal and external factors, like loss of territories, invasions, and instability. The Indo-Hephthalites were a nomadic confederation in Central Asia during the late antiquity period. They were defeated by an alliance of Indian rulers. The Brahmin dynasty existed in the region of Sindh between 632 and around 724. In this territory, here were many other small states in the next centuries. Another important period of this land is expansion of the Arab Caliphates. A large expansion happened in the 7th century. After conquering the Middle East and the Sassanid Empire, Arab forces had reached the Indus Valley. Muhammad bin Qasim conquered most of the Indus region for the Umayyad Empire. During the time of Arab Caliphates, a gradual conversion to Islam happened as the new religion spread more and more. Also, Arabic and Persian languages spread and influenced the region. Ghaznavid Empire and then Ghurid Empire ruled for centuries over the Indus Valley and beyond. By doing so, the new culture and religion was embraced by more and more people, becoming dominant in time. The Delhi Empire was a sultanate based in Delhi that stretched over large parts of India, ruling over the largest rivers here and also deep in India's territory. This sultanate was ruled by five dynasties, Mamluk, Khalji, Tughlaq, Sayyid, and Lodi. During and in the Delhi Sultanate, the emergence of the Hindi-Urdu language started to happen. There was a synthesis of Indian civilization and that of Islamic civilization, and the further integration of the Indian subcontinent with a growing world system and wider international networks spanning large parts of Afro-Eurasia, which had a significant impact on Indian culture and society. Mongols attacked the region between the 13th and 14th centuries. Timur invaded the Punjab region and sacked cities at the end of the 14th century. The first battle of Panipat was fought between the invading forces of Babur and the Lodi Kingdom. It took place in North India and marked the beginning of the Mughal Empire and the end of the Delhi Sultanate. This was one of the earliest battles involving gunpowder, firearms, and field artillery in the Indian subcontinent, which were induced by Mughals in this battle. The early modern period started with the Mughal Empire. Mughal rule was briefly interrupted by the Sur Empire. The religion of Sikhism originated during this era in the Punjab province of Pakistan. Mughal rule was the time of economic development, prosperity, and peace for Pakistan, which remained nearly two centuries and also the golden age of the region. They were responsible for spreading Urdu and built many masjids, mausoleums, madrasas, sand forts in Pakistan. The period was marked by economic activity, excellence in painting, and magnificent architecture. The Mughal dynasty greatly influenced the art, architecture, culture of today's Pakistan. During the decline of Mughal in the late 18th and early 19th century, the other dynasties invaded and then controlled the region. Over these lands ruled the Durrani Empire, the Marathas, and the Sikh Empire. Most of the territory of modern Pakistan was occupied by the East India Company of the British Empire. A series of conflicts followed in the region, in which the British fought local rulers, Sikhs and Afghans. Pakistan became part of British rule later than other parts of South Asia, and it stayed this way until the 14th of August, 1947, when Pakistan gained independence. The two provinces of British India, Punjab and Bengal, were divided along religious lines. Violence and conflicts existed between the Hindus, Sikhs, and Muslims, and millions migrated to the new borders in some exchanges of population. The dispute over Kashmir escalated into the first war between India and Pakistan. Constitution in 1956 led to Pakistan declaring itself an Islamic Republic with the adoption of a parliamentary democratic system of government. Another conflict with India will happen that took place between April 1965 and September 1965. Economic grievances and political disenfranchisement in East Pakistan led to violent political tensions escalating into a civil war. Then another conflict with India. Pakistan was defeated in the war and this led to the Bangladesh independence. Between 1971 to 1977, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto creates an Islamic socialist system. In 1977, after a coup, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto is executed. 
The Islamic law is imposed. Political crises, new elections, and instabilities existed until this day. Also, an important fact of the period of modern Pakistan is their population boom. If in this region lived 35 million when they achieved independence, by 1990, here lived around 100 million, and today, more than 200 million people.